met these guys about a year ago at um, a local market here. Leslie is um, a social worker, life coach, and also yoga instructor. So maybe while we're out here, we can see if Leslie and I can maybe do a yoga pose. Maybe Michael can do one too. Perhaps me not. Oh, come on. I've been a social worker my whole career and practicing and teaching yoga and spending out time outdoors with the family has always been kind of my main ways to take care of myself and get away from stresses of life and work. And so Michael started talking about selling his previous business and starting a farm and was like, are you okay with it? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. We're kind of the shepherds and, we, and this is what we're supposed to be doing. And it results in a just phenomenal you know, product. Today uh, we're going to make up a little fire here on the here on the farm. We're going to throw some of his sausages on there, some pork loin, and some of his yeah. wonderful chicken. <laughs> Woo! Beautiful. You know, a long time you you try to eat right, you try to be healthy. Maybe you work out and you think you know about food. I was going to you know a big box store buying bags of chicken grilling them for the week, thinking I was grilling healthy chicken breast. I would drink things like Gatorade, thinking I was drinking some healthy workout drink, not looking at the label. Then I read what Joel Salatin was doing. You can run pigs through an area and then they'll leave lots of food on the ground because they're just they're bigger. And you can run chickens in and they'll clean that up. The pigs will root at an area slightly deeper than where a chicken will scratch. So if a chicken comes through an area you might end up with a bunch of ragweed or goatweed because the chicken scratched lightly and it pulled those right. seeds up. But if the pigs go through, you may end up with ryegrass or some native grass. So they're doing different things. When I read that, I just thought this is so simple. Like I totally get this. This makes sense to me. Yeah. And so as an entrepreneur and being slightly crazy, <laughs> you can think, hey, well, I'll just go start farming. Beautiful. All this came from our, our farm, pork tenderloin, leg quarters. Woo! Beautiful. Oh, those look beautiful. So I've just rubbed a few spice on there. It's got a bit of mustard and chili and turmeric on the pork loin. And then we've got a bit of uh, paprika garam masala I put on the uh, chicken, so it should be pretty yummy. We are going down to where we have meat chickens. Chicks were in the brooder for three weeks and then we move them out to pasture. You wanna get them out as quickly as possible. Uh, they just do better on grass. And this is called a Salatin pen, named after Joel Salatin. He's kind of the grandfather of the pastured poultry rotational grazing movement. She gets to do all the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have a breeding group that we've had for a while, but we're always watching for who's the next generation. Like right. who, who has good demeanor and is not getting outside the fence. <laughs> who, who conforms with our system. Takes with manners. <laughs> yeah, well, they do it so right. Rotating animals, rotating the crops. Um, you know, rejuvenating the, the soul, the hope, the whole time. Well, and if you watch as they're eating, they're not only eating, but they're using their nose to turn the soil, which, right. which is part of what helps regenerate the land. Right. Yeah. Oh, their little noses are so <laughs> soft. Huh? Oh, look at this. Aren't they so cute? Like last call at an English pub. <laughs> we were just trying to raise some food for us that was better and healthy, and then it expanded. And then we never really thought much about animal welfare, but that's become the most important piece of what we do. Without happy, healthy animals raised in the right way, you don't get. Um, you know, this food, there's just a lot that goes on that we're just trying to share with other people so they know, hey, there's there's good going on, there's good in the food world. It's not all, you know, sugar and, you know, processed. So these are birds that are not laying yet. I hope that they lay soon. 
because it's costly when they don't. So a chick cost us two dollars and to process cost us three dollars and 25 cents if it's whole. Whoa. So now we're at seven dollars and we haven't fed. We haven't started yet. And we haven't put any labor. Right. Or any of the things that come up. Half of our cost it's on uh, food. Of running the farm is feed. Ah, rock and roll. We're going through approximately 15 to 20,000 pounds of feed a month. And that doesn't include any of the transportation, right. time to go pick that up. We're, we're probably spending about 12 to 15 hours a month on feed logistics. competitor is mother nature but just like we raise the broilers and manage them in a certain way we do not overfeed them we let them take their time on this ground right. they love fresh vegetation sometimes you'll see one of them get a worm and start running off and others will be chasing it trying to get the worm out <laughs> <laughs> they like laughing <laughs> sound like a turkey? <laughs> yeah, they're like, hell yeah, you do. <laughs> I can't stop. Thank you for having us. Yes. I think we're going to see our food system change a lot in the next 20 years, thanks to people like you guys. I won't tell if you won't tell. Married single parent. I won't tell. And so there was an understanding of kind of what don't it tell takes mommy. and a willingness to let this, we're going to do this and work together.